but I've started thinking about springtime, so I'll read some poems that touch on springtime. A few months ago, I think it was in the fall, it was kind of a spring-like day, and I went to Central Market in Austin, and it was on a Saturday afternoon, and they had a, a little jazz blues combo playing there. And what struck me was the, the children dancing to this music that they have probably never heard before, music <laughs> from, you know, 50, 60 years before they were even born. And it inspired this poem, Jazz Children. Jazz children dancing to an outdoor band invent their own steps to music they don't know. But the primordial beat drums loudly within them each and possesses their tiny frames with unbridled joy. The combo, electric guitar, bass, viol, and drums is playing in a style heard at my birth in 1947. Blues and jazz circa post-World War II moves these babies of six and seven and eight. One little girl holds back, not sure how to go. She knows there is a proper way to dance this, but the others did not read the manual, each swaying and rocking to a different metronome. They will figure it out in the breadth of time and not have half the fun and half the art of their bopping junior selves just feeling the beat from an outdoor cover band, a century from the music's birth. Thank you. And in my backyard, um, the drought a couple of years ago killed the grass in the backyard, which had survived for years and years because of the shade trees, but uh, it finally just died out and and a few months ago, I noticed that it's starting to come back. I have a little, like a forest meadow there now. And this is about that meadow. A new meadow forms in my backyard, splotched by sunlight through big elm and pecan. Tiny leaf plants, not quite grass and clover, blanket the shady downslope in an autumn, finally come to the gentle city of the violet crown. A feral kitten of splotches, black and white, half-grown catten, interloping the territory of the family cappuccino, my cat's three, <laughs> ignoring the wild child shoot, uh, ignoring the wild, cow, wild child cute feline invader, not yet deemed by them a tangible threat. Drought had killed the nicely shaded lawn. Just three years and three droughts back, the yard had survived the long time weather and, and neglect. Thrice iterations of weedy ground cover reigned, each one holding its own motley and homely regime. The meadow exists for now in the bright Texas fall until replacement by the winter grass of December. Next spring, a renewed meadow will display new flora. Whatever comes, I know it will take me by surprise. thinking one night when I was walking around my house in the dark with very little but moonlight that uh, over the years I've, I've grown away from my fear of the dark that I had as a small child. The dark. I have made friends with the dark gradually, subtly, unknowingly. Lights out at five, there were monsters under bed, an open closet outside, plus spiders repelling all around me, until I conjured up a spider-proof curtain, lowering a bedtime from my ceiling. At ten, I would still close closet doors, superstitiously every night just in case. In times when everything was possible, imagination ran rampant, monsters ruled, wolves lurked deep in the local woods, and golden eagles carried off babies. <laughs> With adulthood, there were still boogeymen, a 
realistic basis for fear of the dark, to be sure, though they did not hide in my bedroom closet, and my spider curtain was no longer required. In middle age now, I just know a home intruder would trip and fall in my messy, cluttered house <laughs> when sneaking about without the benefit of light, and my guard cats would attack him viciously. Well, probably not. But he might stumble from one rubbing against his leg and begging for a bribe. I rather appreciate the play of moonlight and darkness, as well as that of sunlight on a day brilliant and glowing. But the shadowy contrast of black and white and gray pierces deeply into my fundamental human psyche and hints of things seen, unseen, and almost seen, raising the hairs on the back of my neck in alarm, racing the pace of my beating heart with apprehension, and driving my fertile mind to ponder and wonder at worlds dreamed, known, and yet to be discovered for the dark is the mind. The mind is me. I am the dark. Thank you. She's Louise Richardson. She's a songwriter too. She wrote a musical called Chanteuse. It was performed in Salado and Austin, and she's currently working on another one, and I'm privileged to be part of that. And Scott, you can be up next if you'd like to be. Scott is another poet from Austin and a singer-songwriter. The song I did earlier, Grudge Harbor, that was based on his poem called Setting My Spirit Free, Mr. Scott Vine.
It's just a sound that sort of sounds like a flower when it opens to the morning breeze. For a moment, don't we all just want to hover with that fallen leaf from a tree? Take our shoes off and dance in the street for a while. I'm so happy to be here with you. Several hours from now, I won't be here with you. I'll be off in my own little dreamland. But in the meantime, I'm going to sit back and do what I do best. Which is listen to poets speak the mind. Maybe it's one, maybe it's not. Maybe it's a sound we all forgot the words to. Look to hum along for a moment as the coffee brews and the folks come in. Sounds something like sighing. In the middle of every guitar string, there's a heartbeat. When you're sad or alone and you're curled down in your place of holy nuns, wholesome nuns, think back on the one thing you remember when you were a kid. Let it carry you forward to every sound you ever see, every thought you ever dream. The sound of human kindness. It's the pulse in the veins. It's the sound of in the middle of every guitar stream, there's a man and a woman. Maybe you see him, maybe you have It's just about dreaming. Nope, we're good. And set it free. You said I could do another one, right? funny because uh, uh, over the last couple of weeks I uh, uh, have, have, have found that uh, I have a new understanding of old John Lennon and Paul McCartney song about all my guitar gently weeps. It weeps because it's sitting over there in the corner wanting you to play it. Inside every woman's heart, there's an open space. 
sometimes filled with kids, or laughter, changing diapers even. But there's nothing space inside a woman's heart that love pours into. It's the well without end. No matter there be water, or fire, or earth, or sound, they need to come together. Remember that sometimes when you get lonely or sad or blue, that a man's stone and a woman's empty well came together to make you. Inside every woman's heart, there's an empty well. And inside every man's heart, there's a stone. It's time where I play guitar for a moment. You'll have to excuse me. Now you go about your busy day and pretend nothing. May everything be as real and true for you. meaning of love itself. And I'm not saying I have any insight into what that is, but just that I know what I like to do and then share with people like you. Thanks. Wow. at the Baha'i Temple. That's the first Saturday of every month. Louise is there. I'm there. If you want to hear some great poetry and music, come on out to that month. Uh, other open mics, there's one across the street at Junior's on the first and third Mondays. There's the one in Georgetown. It's, it's only on the second Friday now. Uh, if you're interested in playing in Georgetown Square in the summer at the market days on the second Saturday, contact Mr. Bob Case right there. And Bob showed up tonight for our one year anniversary. He was here one year ago tonight. Hey, thank you, Star Coffee. Thank you all of you for coming out during the year and making it a wonderful, wonderful year. Uh, Mr. Nick McKay is up next. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> And I think in the interest of uh, getting to hear everybody, we're going to switch to two songs now. And we're going to have Kay up next. And then I'm going to want to bring back uh, Overdue Bill to do a couple after that, because most of you didn't get to hear Bill. I heard him last week at the, uh, at the uh, another open mic in Cedar Park at Sunset Grill. That's on every Thursday. but it's a fun one, it's one of my favorites, so why not? Still the guy. When you see. 
see a priceless French painting. I see a drunk naked girl. Do you think that a ride in the wild bull sounds crazy? But I'd like to give it a whirl. Yeah, well, no sex man do some things he ain't proud of. And in a weak moment, I might. Walk your sissy down, hold your purse at the mall, but remember, I'm still a guy. And I'll pour out my heart, hold your hand in the car, write a love song that makes you cry. Then turn right around, knock some shirt to the ground, cause he copped a feel as you walk <laughs> Manicured, waxed, and botoxed. <laughs> With paint spray on tans and creamy lotion hands. They can't grip a tackle box. Yeah, with all these men lining up to get neutered, it's hip now to be feminine. I don't highlight my hair, I still got a pair. <laughs> Honey, I'm still a guy. All my eyebrows ain't plucked, there's a gun in my truck, oh thank God, I'm still a guy. <laughs> Drink. 
glory of it all. When the fall comes rolling round 
Lost Crusader Coffee House Raider Your word is the armor that you wear Fight for justice, just what's greater than it seems Don Quixote, he went crazy But he went there standing tall you gotta love the messy glory of it all. You gotta love the messy glory of it all. You gotta love the messy glory of it all.
And that's, that's really strange, because usually it's just like this wonderful sea of darkness and you're just talking to yourself. But like we come out to these open mics and you're expecting music and poetry and like just some good ear candy. And I have really bad stage fright, so I don't know why I decided to get into stand-up comedy, but I get up here and I'm just like, hey, everybody look at me. And in my head, I'm just like, please don't look at me, please don't look at me. It's just, it's a really vicious place to be. But, I mean, anyway, let's just get through this, right? So here we go. Uh, I was watching a movie earlier, and it was set in medieval times, so you know it was awesome. But there was this scene, and this guy was confessing his love to this woman, and he was just like, honey, for your love, I would cross continents and oceans. Because back then, it was so easy to sound romantic. But nowadays, with like this age of technology and everything, crossing continents and oceans only really takes a couple of hours. I mean, we really have to improvise and be creative, you know? Like, honey, for your love, I would shut off all the power in my apartment and my cell phone for like 30 minutes. <laughs> So serious sacrifices, you know? And that would be harder than you think. Because we live in a time where we're very comfortable, you know? They've really worked out all the kinks in that whole convenience and comfort department. And like, not to say we have it all figured out, we still have our problems, but we don't have to worry about surviving to the next day anymore. So we've really started like looking at our fellow man, like, hey, what are you doing? You know, like, and I think that's why things like homosexuality and marijuana are causing such a controversy because really, like, gay people and pot really don't affect anybody other than gay people who smoke pot. <laughs> you know, like, those are the only people affected by it. Like, have people been getting this angry about things? Like, when we were still progressing as a race and, you know, things that really affected them, just like, oh, light bulbs! Light bulbs, really, people can see in the dark. You start letting people see in the dark, they're going to start sinning for pleasure. What are you going to do then? It's like, dude, you have no idea what's coming now that people can see in the dark. They're about to build an entire city made of lights in the desert, dedicated completely to sin. I mean, really, if we're speaking in biblical terms, Las Vegas is the ultimate moral low. I think we could just let the gay people be a little bit happy. And... The other issue, so now we've got that one solved, is marijuana. And, you know, I just think it's weird that we're this far along and there's still plants that are illegal. Like, I get it if you don't, if you just don't like marijuana and drugs in general. Like, people died during Prohibition and I hate alcohol. Like, I, I hate what it does to people, I hate the way it tastes. And alcohol is not just legal, it's encouraged. Like, loved ones will just be like, oh, you had a bad day? Take a seat, here, poison yourself. And I mean, you know, I choose a joint over a drink, but why? that doesn't make me a criminal. But they really have made it seem bad. And with Seattle and Colorado totally legalizing the recreational use, the press has done, has done a great job of still trying to demonize this plant. Like, I read an article, and it said that a guy, a little kid, killed his parents with a hammer because he was high on marijuana. <laughs> no, no, no. He killed his parents with a hammer because he hates them. That's something that you do to somebody that you hate. Ask anybody that's ever been high before, and I was just like, hey man, give me that hammer. I'm gonna commit murder tonight. It doesn't happen. And like now the new thing is that it's completely legal. Apparently children are getting hold of like pot cookies and pot brownies in Colorado. And this is a serious problem. Like this was a front page article on the New York Times and not one sentence in that article referenced responsible parenting. It was all about like restrictions and you can't make the package look good for kids because that's what's making them eat it. And the ultimate sob story was this two-year-old little girl named Evelyn who she went out in front of her apartment building where she was playing and she found a cookie in the grass and she picked it up and ate it and a half hour later she passed out in her mom's shopping cart and her mom freaked out not knowing what she was doing, took her to the hospital and the doctor was just like, 
yeah, so your daughter's stoned. <laughs> then there's nothing we can do to reverse this. There's no medication. You just kind of got to let her ride it out. And it was funny because, like, in the picture, there's just a picture of this cute little girl, and it says, poor little Evelyn ate a cookie, and it had more than chocolate chips. <laughs> but I have an issue with this story because it's like, wait a second. What is this little girl just doing picking random cookies up off of the ground and shoving them in her fat little face? And second of all, is that what's happening in Colorado right now? It's just like raining pot cookies and you just pick them up off the ground? What are we doing in Texas? Let's go to Colorado. All right. Uh, I think that's enough. Thanks, guys. I'm Steven Chris.
written by an old guy named Tennessee Ernie Ford. I've got to, I've got to tell that comedian, that comedian here that I have a problem. I'm not as funny as he is, and I can't really understand if you're laughing at me or laughing at us, but he tells that's always a big push.
I'm going to start off with uh, my favorite song of all time. I don't should recognize it. I don't think it is in there, don't you?
Give it up for Mr. Robert. He's the first open micer, so be nice. Hey. Remember your first open mic.
good voice. Black core. All right, next up is Zach, Zach Marin of Daylight Decode. Is, uh, oh, Aaron, you're from there, and I thought she wasn't here. Are you sitting, standing? Small chair, big chair. You want little chairs, little chairs. You want fries with that? That's a joke.
let's hear it for Zach. And yes, Patricia, the real musician, has finally showed up. Yeah. All right, our last performer is Perry Samar from New Rock to Saw Last week. He's got some good old covers that you guys are. Anybody see the Super Bowl game at halftime show? I think the Denver Broncos must have known what the Red Hot Chili Peppers were going to be singing because they did their best to give it away. <coughs> anyway, normally I have my wife sing with me, but uh, she's not feeling too well tonight, so she elected to sit out. So I'm going to do two songs from my favorite songwriter, a guy by the name of John Prine. The first one is a uh, one off his first album. I hear a lot of people praying for our troops, and I hope that none of them come back broken like this guy did. Sam Stone came home to his wife and family after serving in the conflict overseas. Time that he served had shattered all his nerves and left a little shrapnel in his knee. But the morphine eased the pain and the grass grew round his brain and gave him all the confidence he lacked. With a purple heart and a monkey on his back There's a hole in daddy's arm Where all the money goes Jesus Christ died for nothing I suppose Little pictures have big ears They don't stop to count the years Songs never last too long on broken radios. Sam Stone's welcome home didn't last too long. He went to work when he spent his last time. The little Sammy took to stealing. When he got that empty feeling for a hundred dollar habit without overtime, and the gold rolled through his veins like a thousand railroad trains, and eased his mind in the hours that he chose. While his kids ran around wearing other people's clothes There's a hole in daddy's arm where all the money goes Jesus Christ died for nothing I suppose Little pictures have big ears They don't stop to count the years Songs never last too long on broken radios. Mm -hmm. Sam Stone was alone when he popped his last balloon, climbing walls while sitting in a chair. And he played his last request. While the room smelled just like death With an overdose hovering in the air But life had lost its fun And there was nothing to be done Betrayed his house that he bought on the GI Bill For a flag draped casket on a local hero's hill Daddy's arm where all the money goes. Jesus Christ died for nothing, I suppose. Little picture.
preachers have big ears They don't stop to count the years Sweet songs never last too long on broken radios mm -hmm. Here's a later one that he wrote. I don't want your big french fries. I don't want your car. I don't want to buy no soap from no washed up movie star.
different voices in so many different ways. So this is the first time I came to Star Bar, and it very well may be the last, because we don't know what will happen when I drive away from here, we don't know what will happen when we all drive away from here. So I figure I should tell you what's on my mind and this opportunity and this chance I get. One, I'm deeply thankful for all of y'all for paying attention of the night in your life enough to hear that part of you that wants to share with other people regardless of whether you're good at it or bad at it or it doesn't really matter just that you want to share it with somebody it's fantastic so for that I'm thankful the complexities of life can get to be so great sometimes we want to pull our hair out or yell and rage to the machine that looks like it's out of control. <laughs> but as we know, since we're poets sitting in the room at Star Bar, that does no good at all. I love each and every one of you. And it doesn't take much for me to say that because I say that at every mic I go to. And the reason I do is because you're here in this moment, in this life this world, and that is a beautiful thing, and I am deeply thankful for it. And I could say wild things, I could say dreams like this whole room is full of stars, and in a way it is, but there's nothing more heavenly than a woman cleaning up behind the bar. traffic outside on 35 and I have 183 and it's just some place for us to remember where we were on Tuesday. I forget the date, I don't know what it is, but 4th of February. Pay attention, not to me, not to your fellow poet or your mom or your wife or your kid or your husband. Pay attention to the fact that inside you is a pulse and it began before you were born and it will go on after you die. One that's as deep in the ground as that earth standing below us and as high as the heavens and the sky back there in the center of our mind somewhere there's a guy sitting by our fireplace Maybe reading a book or sipping a glass of wine as his dog lays down and drools on his feet. I to say goodbye to him and a good night. Any guesses? You don't. You come out tomorrow to another mic. Going to work, and you greet that neighbor of yours behind your cubicle or on an assembly line with a smile and say, Thank you for being you and sharing a bit of your life with me. Because without you, I wouldn't be whatever. We're all in it together, and life is so, I think. Sounds like the song somewhere there toward the end. Sounds like we're getting there, so. Find the number one angel. Tomorrow the sun will come up. We don't know what is going to happen then. So I'll wrap up with this. Thank you for listening. Awesome. Thank you for making it a fantastic year and keep coming. Yeah.